a lot of what I do involves replicating parts and I've been getting some questions recently on how I go about doing it. So this video is going to be about taking that sort of start to finish. Now I use SolidWorks for the modeling and the HSM plugin in SolidWorks for the cam because I have access to it from work. But if you haven't got any softwares, I'd recommend Fusion 360. It isn't free, but it's close to it compared to a lot of these other softwares and you get the exact same results. I'm running a Centroid Acorn control on a converted Precision Matthews PM30 MV. On most parts, there's things that matter and things that don't. So in this case, the machine surfaces are critical and need to be accurate and in position, but the cast shape isn't really. I probe all the machine features with this S5000 Drewtronics probe. It's amazingly good for the cost, and if you're into this kind of thing at all, I highly recommend it. As I probe the features, I start building them one by one with surfaces and SolidWorks. What you're looking at here is sort of a floating surface model of all the critical machine details. This is that ledge. This is the main bore with that little O-ring groove and all these bosses with clearance holes for the bolts. Um, this is everything that's critical and that matters. The rest we can sort of start filling in uh, as the bulk shape. To get the bulk shape as accurate as possible, I like to use uh, a photo overlaid on top of these critical parts. I match the critical modeled surfaces up as best I can with the features in the photo, and then I trace the bulk shape from there. You can start seeing more and more progress as I fill in the bulk details. In this case, I'm making two parts. There's the part that we measured and modeled, and then there's the direct mirror image. So once we've got one, we've kind of got them both. So these are all the machining operations for both parts. We've got three operations for the original part and three operations for the mirrored part. Now, because neither of the parts are square, uh, I couldn't hold them in a vise, so I had to make this fixture plate. It's got through holes for bolts to be held from the bottom and some dowel locating holes here and here that will let us accurately locate the stock or the part as we flip it going from operation to operation. So the very first step is just to drill and tap four holes that'll let us hold the stock to the fixture plate. Once we've got those holes in, the second operation on the fixture plate is going to be to machine all the features that we have access to from the top. When we've done that, we're going to use the dowel locating holes that we've also machined in and flip it around and put them on the pins in the fixture plate so that it's accurately located. And then we're going to machine everything from the bottom for op3. So on the left side here is all of my cam. So you'll notice I've got a folder or two for every single operation. So you see I've got an op1 vice original folder which is op1 vice original. That's here. Op2 brings us down here. I've got a few op3s here because for this last operation when I'm machining this bore I am going to change my origin from the corner of the fixture plate to the bore that I had machined from the other side just to get the two bores on both sides to line up as well as possible. But more or less we've got you know six operations and they've each got a corresponding folder or folders on the cam side. So we put the stock in the vise and then jog the machine over so that the probe is sitting just to the left of the stock. Then in the centroid control we go into probing and we're going to probe this as a web. We orient the web in that little graphic so that the stylus is sitting to the left of the part, the same way it's sitting on our machine. And then you enter the general length of the piece. Ours is six inches. I like to overshoot it with the probe a little bit. And then this clearance amount is how high up the probe moves over the part. I like to keep it at about half an inch. When you hit cycle start, we get a nice message that tells us to verify the function of the probe. So in the message window there, you can see the probe tripping. That's just me hitting it with my finger. Uh, just helps prevent a crash. When we hit cycle start, uh, the probing routine starts running. When the routine finishes, we get a message in the centroid control. It tells us the center of the web is 0.2247, and it also tells us the length of the part, which is nice. Uh, you'll notice X is 0.2247 right now on the DRO, so it lets us easily zero out uh, the x-axis in the current position it's sitting in. Go hit set, and you can see x is zero. Now we're going to do the same thing probing in y. We're going to orient the piece so that the stylus is sitting below the part. And then we're essentially going to repeat the same web probing routine 
but in the y direction to find our y work coordinate offset and then touch down for the z work coordinate offset. Now where the probe is touching now is our x0, y0, z0, which matches up perfectly with what we've got in CAM. We would go ahead and post the code. This is turning the toolpaths into G-code for the control. We go into the control and load up the new file. And we hit cycle start. And it's asking us to put in the 3 8 45 degree chamfer tool. I'm using the Tormach TTS tool holding system, which just keeps the tool offsets between changes, unlike collets where you sort of have to touch off every time your, uh, your tool offset changes. So here we see the drill spotting, and we come in with a five millimeter drill. We're gonna be putting in M6 threads, and don't pay too much attention to how I'm tapping these holes. Uh, I strongly advise against it. I'm manually kind of ramming it into the part and turning the spindle motor off before it's too late, just using my own judgment. Real easy for things to go wrong here. Then I reverse the spindle, and out it comes. Once all the holes are in, we take it out of the vise, and we now bolt it down to our fixture plate for OP2. We put the fixture plate in the vise with the stock bolted to it, and then we got to probe in again. So the work coordinate offset for this OP2 is the top corner of the fixture plate. So we're probed in at sort of the top left corner of the fixture plate, which matches what we have in CAM. Now, for OP2, these are all the tool paths that we've got. It's a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to go through it step by step, but we can run a quick stock simulation to uh, show you what we're hoping to end up with. So mostly I'm using the AB Tools 3 quarter inch shear hog and a 3 8 inch uh, 3 flute aluminum end mill to remove the majority of the material. In this first facing operation, I'm using the Tormach Superfly. The Superfly removes material faster than any other tool I have. Uh, unfortunately, it can only be used in these kind of facing operations. Uh, this footage is sped up, but I run it at 3000 RPM and 15,000 feed per tooth. We're only removing 20 thou here, but you can go a lot deeper with the same settings. And the surface finish is amazing. Next, I'm running the AB Tools Shear Hog in a 2D adaptive clearing operation. This is a, it's a three quarter inch single flute indexable cutter. And it also removes material relatively quickly for my machine anyway. Again, this footage is sped up, but we're doing uh, 50 thou depth of cut, 375 thou step over, and we're doing around 10 thou feed per tooth. This is a 3 8 three flute aluminum end mill. I run it at 3000 RPM. This is 375 thou depth of cut and 40 thou width of cut. This tool's got a lot nicer finishing than the AB Tools Shear Hog, so I'll sometimes use it to clean up the floors and always use it to clean up any sidewalls. It's got about a one inch stick out, which is perfect for this part. I can hit it at full depth and have a nice clean uh, sidewall all along the part. This is a two flute, one eighth inch aluminum end mill, and it's got such a big stick out that I need for reach, but I've got to run it real slow. So this is 3000 RPM, about 2000 feed per tooth, and it's ramping at like a maximum ramp step down of 10 thou. This is a 3 8 45 degree or 90 degree chamfer mill. I'm um, just doing some deburring here. I don't like deburring by hand. It's extra work and doesn't look very good. So I always deburr on the machine wherever possible. And in my opinion, these little chamfers add a pretty slick look to the part. So I use it quite a bit. I also use it to spot the holes. Um, these spots are deep so that the, the holes end up having a chamfer on them. And I'm doing some rapid pecking here because I kind of made the mistake of drilling last. So I'm trying to break the chips to make sure they don't swing around and start scratching the part. This is a quarter inch two flute aluminum end mill, just clearing out the bolt holes here. We take the part out of the vise and get ready to flip it around on the fixture plate. We undo the bolts from the back, which breaks the part free. 
And now we go ahead and insert the dowel holes into the fixture plate. So I've got two holes uh, or two dowels in the fixture plate that line up with the two holes on the workpiece. And so this way, when we touch off the corner of the fixture plate, uh, the part will be accurately located with respect to that work coordinate offset of the corner of the plate. So we load it back up in the vise. And we got a probe in again. So again, we're using the sort of top left corner of the fixture plate as the work coordinate offset, which matches what we have in CAM. These are the tool paths for most of the tool paths for the last operation. But in this operation, I have that one extra folder that I use to change the origin to the center of the bore. So I probe it in again and machine the bore features from this side with respect to the center of the bore from the other side just to get them to line up as well as possible. I'm coming in again with the Tormach Superfly. Here we're doing a 50 thou depth of cut. It's about a two and a half inch step over, 3000 RPM and 15 thou feed per tooth. I could go a little deeper and push the tool a little harder, but it removes material so quickly I've never really felt the need to. Coming in again with the three quarter single flute indexable cutter, AB Tools Shear Hog. Again, we're doing 50 thou depth of cut, 350 thou, uh, step over 3000 RPM and 10 thou feed per tooth. Cleaning up the floors here with the uh, 3H3 flute aluminum end mill. I really don't like the finish that the uh, AB Tools shear hog leaves. I wonder if there's something I can do. Maybe there's another insert uh, that improves the finish because I heard it can be good, but I haven't had much luck with it. Doing some last minute deburring here again. And then this is where we probe into the center of the bore for the very last operations. I'm keeping the work offset in Z at the top of the fixture plate, but I'm changing X and Y to be in the center of that bore. Here's where we machine the bore features from this side, again with the 3 8 3 flute uh, solid carbide end mill. Last finishing pass here. Some last minute deburring again, and it's done. We undo the bolts from the back of the fixture plate to release the part. And it looks pretty good.